Hi there, it's Dr. Bernstein, and in, this video is the first installment of a two-part series that is designed to introduce you to the Romantic period within American literature. This period is generally understood to have begun in, begun in 1836 with the publication of Ralph Waldo Emerson's Nature, and generally considered to have drawn to a close in 1865 at the end of the Civil War. Now, obviously, literary periods are things that are mostly constructed in retrospect uh, by future generations of scholars and thinkers who sort of look back and think, wow, you know, during this time, look at these, you know, ideas that so many different writers and thinkers were, you know, having or, or this particular style. Now, sometimes there are the writers themselves are self-consciously, you know, um, thinking about themselves in relation to others, and they have this um, philosophy or literary style that they're really trying to cultivate. But a lot of times, these periods are constructed in retrospect, so different people have slightly different dates. Um, but these are the most generally accepted dates, 1836 to 1865. And within this 30-year time period, there were two major movements. The Transcendentalist Movement, which... Uh, most people think begins in 1836 and draws to a close in 1844, and the American Renaissance, which begins in 1850 and ends in 1855. So let me start by telling you a little bit about the Transcendentalist movement. The Transcendentalists placed a great deal of emphasis on the intuition, on our inner conscience, our inner sense of right and wrong, and reason with a capital R. One scholar points out that uh, transcendentalists believe that man can intuitively transcend, can intuitively rise above the limits of the senses and of logic and receive directly higher truths and greater knowledge denied to these more mundane methods of knowing. So when you read Emerson's Self-Reliance, we're not going to be reading Emerson's Nature in our course, we're going to be reading self-reliance. But when you read Self-Reliance, which was published in 1841, you're going to see some of these uh, core transcendentalist beliefs working themselves out um, in his writing um, and issues that he's grappling with himself. Um, and if you, I, I sort of condensed the transcendentalist movement into the tiniest nutshell possible for this video. But you should also read the document, the supplemental document that I created and posted on our D2L site um, that provides you with much more detailed information about these concepts that I just mentioned. Um, so if you're not in one of my classes, you can get in touch with me through my website and I can help you gain access to that document. The second movement that I want to tell you about is the American Renaissance. Again. That was, began in 1850, drew to a close in 1855. Renaissance is not really the best word to describe what's happening here because Renaissance means rebirth. What's really happening during this time is the birth of American literature, the first major flourishing of American literature. Now, clearly, there were you know, creative writers prior to um, the American Renaissance, but this is a time, a really concentrated five-year period of time where a lot of the works that most people think of when they think of 19th century American literature or American literature, when these works were all published within this short period of time. So I'm talking about um, Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, Herman Melville's Moby Dick, Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, um, Thoreau's Walden, and Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. So those are all um, very significant works of literature, and even more was published during this time um, by these authors and more. But this will sort of give you a sense of how the key texts were being published during that time. And it's interesting how it really wasn't until around 60 years after declaring independence that American writers began to become even more really self-consciously um, aware of a desire to create some sort of distinctive American literary style or some kind of distinctive American literature. And so while we're reading 
um, the works of Emerson and of Hawthorne and of uh, Whitman, and perhaps even if we have time, Harriet Beecher Stowe. I want you to think about, you know, what, if anything, makes these works seem American to you? There's no one right or wrong answer. This is a sort of question that's just worth contemplating. You know, what makes something, a, you know, a literature of a nation? This is a very, you know, creating your, a na national literature, a national language is um, about politics. I mean, it's about power. Uh, during the 19th century is also the time when uh, Webster's Dictionary came out, and Webster said, "Look, you know, there was the um, the the um, Samuel Johnson's dictionary that sort of was the the main dictionary for England, and there was this idea that you know, we need a dictionary of the American English language. Uh, we need something that's distinctly ours. So these are issues that I would like you to explore." And in the second installment, I will tell you a little bit more about romanticism in general. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. Bye.